Hi, and welcome to Marriage Matters. I'm Dr. Mark. And I'm Liz. We're your marriage and communication coaches, here to inspire, instill hope, and empower you to weather the challenges of married life. Today, Mark and I have the pleasure of having our dear friend and an amazing coach from Heart of the Matter Coaching, Steve Robin. Thank you, Liz. Thank welcome, you, Mark. welcome. Welcome. So before we even get going, Steve, you said an amazing quote before that I, I, Mark and I think it's the perfect way to kick off the show because one of the things that Steve does that, that we love, and hopefully you'll see this throughout the show, he's like a Buddha, a Buddha of wisdom, and we absolutely love this about wow, Steve. So go ahead and, and share your quote with the audience. Well, I think it's important that whenever we're in a coaching situation that um, uh, I think of Albert Einstein, who was really, who was a scientist, but really um, very versed in, 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 in matters that are spiritual. And Albert Einstein said the most important decision we can make is to decide whether we're living in a hostile or a friendly universe. And if we're living in a hostile universe, we believe that people that we meet in circumstances that come into our lives are coming in to hurt us. And we're coming from not love, but we're coming from fear. Uh, if we feel that we live in a, in a friendly universe, we feel the universe is almost like a GPS. And that means that if we make a, a wrong left turn or we make a wrong right turn, that the universe is going to bring us back to a place where we feel we need to be. And I would even add a place that it feels is a better place for us. You know, that's really so important. If you think about it, we always say that um, our perception is our reality. So if you start with the foundation of deciding, intentionally saying, I'm going to look at things as being helpful to me, you immediately are in a different and positive place. And then we've all experienced, and we know that those who have read uh, Michael Singer's work, uh, those who have read uh, The Secret, also understand that the, the universe is there to guide us, that there is this incredible force, whether you want to call it God, you want to call it the universe, it's a positive influence that helps us to move forward. Yeah, and all we need to do is keep our consciousness in that place. If, if we have our consciousness in a place that doesn't serve us, we, the universe is going to bring situations and people to us to prove that we're wrong, that we're that's that we're that that's just, that that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. But if we keep our consciousness in a place that is serving us and is the place where we should be, then um, situations come up that support our goals and support uh, where we'd like to, to go. It's like uh, Joseph Campbell says: when you uh, when you do that, when you're conscious and you're intentional about what you're doing, all of a sudden doors and windows open that were never there before because you're allowing it, you're inviting it, you're you're living in a place of um, of peace and harmony rather than, like you said, a hostile environment. Right, right. So it's always a good place to start that off in any kind of coaching situation to move people into a place where they, they can feel that things are happening for them and they can keep themselves in a place where um, uh, life will support them rather than hurt them. And it's really all about uh, lifting yourself up and being in a place that, uh, you know, where you should be. So that leads me to what I think is an important question for everybody to know. Who are your heroes who led you into doing this? Well, that's a great question. It's interesting. I, was, uh, I live in the Bronx through, through the eighth grade, and um, I lived 10 blocks from Yankee Stadium, and my heroes back then were people that were baseball players. Mm -hmm. I used to walk the 10 blocks. I used to play stickball in the streets, and I saw the world through a bat and a glove in a baseball field. And uh, that's the way my world was at that time. However, as, things, as, as, as time went on, I, be, I had deeper feelings. Uh, you know, I grew up in a, in a home, Depression-era parents, and they were, uh, as far as Maslow's hierarchy of needs, their concerns were really safety needs and survival needs. And as far as the deeper questions, well, they didn't really address them. And they, those are questions that really concern me. So I wanted to find answers. So as I got older and older and, 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 got, and there were more challenges, I wanted to know why things worked the way that they did. So then that led me to people like M. Scott Peck, The Road Less Traveled, and then Michael Brown, uh, The Presence Process, uh, Gary Zukov, uh, who I love, The Seat of the Soul, Marianne Williamson. These are the people that really helped me figure out the world and figure out why the world and the universe ran and operated the way that it did. Very existential approaches, and when you're looking at your passion, which is really transforming human lives, particularly as they go through a certain set of challenges that we'll, uh, we'll address, what an incredible foundation of thought work to, uh, to base that on. So that's really wonderful to understand that. So how do you 
bring that to your coaching? I mean, you mentioned a lot of incredible people. So how, when you're working with somebody, how do you impart the wisdom from all those different people and the, the, the different books, which frankly, I've, I've read several of those books, thanks to Steve, and they're all amazing. Yeah, great. So how do you use that? Well, it's, it's interesting. Every situation is different, and you know, you really have to meet people where they are. Um, and if people are in a situation where they're ready to hear everything that I have, then uh, I'll bring that to, to them. But if they're in a, you know, you have to take baby steps, and I took baby steps as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I got through this by the challenges that I, that I faced in my, own, in my own life. So it's really a case-by-case -case situation. And, you know, if you're working with me, you're going to realize that there is an intelligence in the universe that we need to work with instead of against. And it's not everything is a hard surface, but that there is something that is going on between the lines. And, you know, it's interesting, Albert Einstein knew that early on. And, you know, a scientist believes that if you can't measure something, either see it or smell it or taste it or hear it or touch it, it doesn't really exist. But there is something going on between the lines. And I think that his, um, his I think he was concerned that you know, his colleagues would think less of him because, you know, he didn't want to measure everything, but he knew that there was something else going on. And there is an intelligence out there that is, that is showing up for us in every day and every way with the people that we meet and the circumstances that we have that's out there to help us and support us. And I try to let people know that if you can just open up your basket, things will drop in and magic and miracles can actually take place. Exactly. There you go. There's the Buddha wisdom. So how do you implement that into your life? Well, you know, it's interesting. We all have goals and we all have things that we want, but sometimes we need to let things just play out. For example, I'm, I'm a big fan of, you know, journey consciousness rather than results consciousness. And journey consciousness means that um, when you are on a journey that really resonates with your heart and resonates with who you really are, and uh, you're putting your best efforts forward and your best intentions are at play, um, in my view, you've already won. Mm. Okay, so uh, the results can be left up to the gods. And as T.S. Eliot said, um, it's only the trying, the rest is not our business. And uh, it's really a matter of putting something out there, having good intention, letting things play, let, let the universe come in and you can tweak things and you can adjust things and you can, uh, you know, when you get more information from any, any way it comes from, to you, whether it's, you know, meeting somebody in line at the bakery, a conversation, a book that comes in the mail that you open to a particular passage, um, these are things that are there to serve you and it's amazing when that book comes in the mail, why is it that we open it just to what we re what, exactly what we need to read? Mm -hmm. So, that, like I said, there's something going on besides this hard surface that's there to support us and to help us. And what I try to get across to my clients is that they need to let that happen and trust in that process. So is the, is the question that you're then asking those clients or helping them to get to initially is to create that awareness? Obviously, if you open the book and you say, oh, I opened the book, yeah, it's interesting, you close it, that a lack of awareness doesn't allow you then to allow that passage to percolate. Right, so, right. So, you know, again, back to the Albert Einstein thing, you need to, 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 to accept the fact, and I've seen it in my own life because I've had so many challenges as, as, as the two of you have, and what, what you, you come to realize is that if we just leave things alone and take a breath and let things just happen the way they, they need to happen, um, we don't have to judge it as good, we don't have to judge it as bad, we can just, we don't have to jump in and be part of it, it's really just energy in motion, and we can just let that just happen and glean some of the, the benefits from it if we create enough space for that to, to, to happen in our life. We don't need to control everything. We can uh, be part of um, what's happening by observing it and taking it in and noticing it and going, aha, uh -huh, let's see what this means. Why is this coming up for me? You know, it's amazing uh, what the wisdom you're imparting. Obviously, if people in the audience are interested, uh, um, obviously Steve is always uh, available. 
But you can also um, look at uh, Michael Singer's work, both The Untethered Soul and uh, The Surrender Experiment, because he sort of talks about that in stepping back, or sitting back, really, and, and sort of observing impassionately what's happening rather than being caught up in the emotion of that, which doesn't really serve you. Well, what it does, what, what, I love what you're saying, because most of us, we resist things that we don't like. And that's sort of what Michael Singer is saying. When you, when you keep resisting and resisting and resisting, you're actually making, in a sense, the situation worse. You're, you're taking in negative things and you're letting it stick. When you do what you're saying, which is you just sort of let go and see and just let the pieces land where they're supposed to. It doesn't mean you don't wake up in the morning and you, um, you just say, I'm just going to stay in bed because you know, the universe is going to make it happen for me and I don't have to do anything. That's not what you're saying. What you're saying is to be aware that if you don't resist, correct me if this is, I mean, if you're mm -hmm. not saying sure. this, okay. Um, if, you're, if you're aware uh, that there's something bigger out there and that, of course, we live here, we live in this 3D world, we have to wake up in the morning, we have jobs, we have families to take care of and mm -hmm. things to do and people to see, but we can't control every little piece of our lives. There's a bigger thing out there that, that has a plan in a sense, and if we just relax into it, things will fall into place. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, we, we do, you know, things that come up in our lives, and I completely agree, that's exactly what I'm saying, but things that, we ha that come up in our lives, you know, we do need to address them. We, we don't need to sit by and watch them. You know, uh, there's a great quote from uh, one, one, somebody who I'm a big fan of, Jeff Tweedy from the band Wilco, who says, embracing the situation is our only chance to be free. And what that means is that when something comes up, whether it's in your marriage, in situ people that you work with, people that I work with that are going through divorce or going through transitions, if we don't embrace the situation and really take it in, it's going to show up and integrate its lessons. It's going to show up in our lives in another form. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be out there thinking, OK, we're going to just shove it under the rug, and we're not going to deal with it. And then we go down the street, we make a left turn, and it's sitting there on a rock waving its hand <laughs> saying, remember me? Here I am. And For if sure. you don't integrate those lessons, you don't embrace the situation and become free, you'll never be free. The lesson returns and returns, returns. until you pass the test. Yeah, the messenger is, as uh, Michael Brown says, the messenger keeps coming around until you get the message. And when you get the message, it, he doesn't come around or she doesn't come around anymore. That's right. You know, so uh, you can just move on to your next challenge. And that's really the way life works. You know, life works in a magical way, again, to support us, to support our best intentions, and to, to serve us and to make us, you know, responsible and aware of, of, of the lessons that we have yet to learn. Well, this is absolutely fantastic. We're going to be back in a couple of moments with Steve Robin and Heart of the Matter Coaching and some more wisdom and uh, some more Buddha thoughts. In the meantime, we're going to just take a moment to uh, have a commercial break. We'll be back shortly. New Jersey, 130 miles of beautiful beaches, solid rock, and everything in between. Look in the window. <laughs> now that's New Jersey. Plan your New Jersey trip at visitnj.org. Waves of fun. Nights of excitement and a trail of memories. Now that's New Jersey.
and welcome back to Marriage Matters. I'm Dr. Mark and Liz, Liz. and we're here with uh, our good friend and extraordinary coach, Steve Robin and Heart of the Matter Coaching. Steve, you know, the best lessons are those that we learn ourselves and then we see how we can really take the journey that we went on and help others to get to a better place through that, that pain, that sorrow, those points of uh, tumult in our own life. Sure. You went through a very difficult divorce uh, years ago with young children, um, and you've confided in us that you had some fears and some uh, uh, concerns, obviously. Can you tell us about that and how that really impassioned you to do what you do now to really transform other people? Sure, thanks, Mark. So um, I went through a divorce many years ago. My children were very young. I have three wonderful kids. Um, at the time, they were four, they were eight, and 12. Mm -hmm. And I had lots and lots of concerns. I was concerned about, well, would I have enough money? Where would I live? Would I be able to continue the relationship that I had with my kids because they were the most important uh, people in my life? In my life. Uh, uh, would my parents support me? Would my friends still be my friends? What would happen to my work relationships. Um, I was um, probably divorced sooner than the people that, one of the earlier divorces certainly in my group of friends and I think the first divorce in my family. So I had concerns that were real and um, I didn't know how I would make it through. I, I really didn't. I, I, I wondered whether I would make it through but I just found out that you know when you're going through hell you got to keep on going number one and you have to keep on being consistent, and I was consistent with my kids, and I kept showing up. Uh, they, you know, it's been said that 90% uh, of life is showing up. So mm -hmm. I kept showing up. I was calling my kids every day consistently. I was coaching their baseball, basketball, and softball teams. I coached boys teams and girls teams. And I found out, and I was concerned also that, you know, did, w would my kids still love me? You know, mm -hmm. simple concern. I mean, I was talking about some pretty deep existential stuff in the first session, but I had real mundane, real world concerns. And I didn't know whether I'd be able to weather them, and I found out that if I could just make myself whole and make myself better and work on myself to the best of my ability, my kids would have a place where they can, and also to show my kids how to be in the world with my relationship with them, my relationship with, uh, with, uh, with family, with others, if I can be an example, a leadership mm -hmm. example for them, then that would be a really good start. So I did my best to work on myself and to really clean up what other, whatever stuff I had under the rug that needed to be addressed. And I found that by, by, little by little by being consistent and really showing up every day, that I could be a model for them and I can feel good about the way that I was moving forward in the world. I would love to hear what your kids would have to say about what you just said because you really are, you were a role model for your kids and that's not an easy thing to do. Going through divorce, as we know, is a very yeah. painful experience and, and people don't get married to get divorced. That's not the plan, but it happens. And you on your own figured out that you needed to, to become whole. How did you do the work? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I don't know how much actual reading or spiritual type work I was doing, but I was just doing basic things. I was telling my kids I love them. I was telling them I'm always going to be there for them. I was letting them know that whatever happened with mom and, and, and I really had nothing to do with them. And, um, you know, one, one thing I remember, I, I was always concerned about how things would be perceived. And I, I ran into this woman, and I'll never forget what she said. She said to me, because I would, I would always tell people, you know, I got divorced and I have three kids, and they would say, oh, my God, those kids, and, you know, that's what it was back then. Mm -hmm. But I met this woman, and she said, oh, my God, how wonderful is it that you have three wonderful kids that came out of that marriage? And I thought, wow, if you can change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a positive thing? Isn't that a way to reframe things? Isn't that a way, a new vantage point for me to move forward and for me to realize that Whatever was coming up in my life was actually coming up for me. It wasn't coming up to me. That's one of the most important questions that we all can ask, and we bring that to our clients. We, we say that to ourselves. We typically go to, well, life is happening to me. This happens to me. The slight little reframe, as you said, 
Why is this happening for me? What's the benefit? What's the lesson? Where can I take it? And that's so important. As you meet people and they're in the pain that you were in, they're either in sorrow, well, this is happening to me, or they're just angry and bitter, or maybe they've just started to get to the point they're accepting, but they don't know where to go. That's what the three of us refer to as, as low energy. Yeah. It's, it's catabolic, it's destructive to us. The existential thoughts that really help to guide us are, are far away from that. So how do you start to draw out from them the things they need to do so that they can get on that journey? The first step is always the most difficult, but the most important. Yeah, it's important to let people know that they have all the capability within themselves and they have the ability to rise to the occasion. I mean, I know that I felt that I was, I was, I was you know, underwater. And, you know, sometimes you have to fail a few times before you can succeed. And these things are coming up for us so that we can learn the lessons and that we can um, move forward in our lives in a way that's going to serve us. And, you know, things don't, let's face it, things don't happen positively for anybody, you know, whether you label it positive or negative, you know, but when we look back in our lives, we can really say that at the moment I didn't know why this was happening and I just couldn't f understand it, but it was really happening because I needed to get that. And if I can, again, be consistent, and again, I mentioned consistency, be consistent, learn the lesson, move forward in a way that is going to demonstrate to me and to the world and to the people in my world, like my children, that I got this. And um, be patient with yourself. You know, we need to be patient with ourselves and gives our, give ourselves the same patience that we would give everybody else. We, we're very, we often are difficult with, with ourselves. We, we, we don't always, um, you know, give ourselves a pat on the back or tell ourselves to take a deep breath. But if we can be kind to ourselves, then we can move forward in a way that's going to be good for us. I love that message, and I think that everybody needs to hear that message. I'm just thinking about the clients that probably come to you and, and just trying to get them to really understand what you just said, which is consistency. Consistency is everything. It's so true. I mean, everything that we say when we're working with people, it's that you have to practice. Like, everything is practice. Everything is consistency because it's not going to keep going if you don't, if you aren't consistent. And that's not easy for everybody because a lot of people get on, you know, it's like, like the January 1 people who are, I'm going to the gym and I'm going <laughs> to work out and I'm going to be great. And then all sure. of a sudden, you know, January 25 rolls around and they're sitting on their couch, you know, with beer or drinking coffee, not getting up. How do you, as a coach, keep them motivated to be to keep that consistency and to help them to really truly understand how impactful that is. Well, you know, I think it's important to to celebrate um, the mm -hmm. wins that your that your clients have. Mm -hmm. um, everybody starts at a place that they feel is, oh my God, I can't. Be you're not going to believe where I am here. I'm right. Well, you know what? I can <laughs> believe that, and I can acknowledge that because I was there, and maybe even lower. So mm -hmm. nothing you're going to tell me is going to make me feel. Mm -hmm less of you. I think that we're, we all have so much more in common with each other than, we, that, than, than that that separates us. And if we can celebrate that and acknowledge and validate the, the experiences that people are having, they feel like we're teammates. And I want to be a teammate and a cheerleader for the people that I work with. And I want to let them know that they're in a safe place mm -hmm. and that we are going to address this and move forward together. You can't ask for anything more than that. You can't. It's, it's absolutely so empowering to feel that you are able to do something when you're on that side, when you don't have anything except what's in front of you. And there is the ability to create hope. Hope is so empowering. It's so influential. And just to create that and say, yes, there's a way forward. You're not going to follow me, but I'm going to help you to see each and every step so that you can move forward. And we're gonna take those steps, as you said, in partnership. Partnering with that person is, is absolutely, absolutely extraordinarily important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes people don't think that they're doing well, but I, can, I always wanna let them know that, you know, when we first started, you were over here. You didn't think that we were going to be able to move forward in any way, poss in, in any way at all. And I just want you to know that whatever doubts you had, you've proven to me over the last six weeks that you are, you are not in the same place, mm -hmm. and you are not the same person. And they will often say, wow, thank you. Really? I've said, well, yeah, well, what about this and this and this and this? And they'll say, 
oh yeah, I, yeah, you know, you're right. And then they, they leave feeling good about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that any, if there's any lesson that we can impart to our children or to people around us or to ourselves is to feel good about ourselves and acknowledge the fact that we are growing and making people feel that they really have something there and they have something to work with and that there's really, really a, a, a possible and a solid future ahead. And so, sorry to interrupt, no. but um, one last thing, small changes is what you're saying. So many people are waiting for these big changes and what you're saying is, and it's so important, it's the small changes. It's the small changes that all of a sudden you can then look back six weeks, eight weeks, oh, they actually are bigger. But when you're in those moments of the small changes, they don't feel as big. And have patience with yourself. Love that. I think most people need to, need to think about that. It's yeah. huge. So we're coming to the end of our, our show. Um, it's always too fast. Uh, Steve, I know that you are incredibly busy and uh, you have a plethora of clients that are always in and you're doing amazing work. For the people who uh, are interested, um, how can they get in touch with you and uh, how can they find you if uh, uh, they feel that you're able to add value uh, to their life? Yeah, so, so I'm on, I'm on uh, Facebook uh, under Heart of the Matter Coaching um, LLC. Uh, you can see me on Instagram on Steve Robin Coach. Um, I post things that'll get you to, if you look at my Instagram page, you'll be able to get a feeling for who I am and what's important to me and the people that have inspired me and, 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 and how I move through my life. And uh, again, Facebook business, you can contact me um, at uh, steverobincoach at gmail.com. And uh, I do look forward to working with you and um, look forward to good things for all of us. And that's uh, really it for the show today. We want to thank you for joining us on Marriage Matters. We look forward to uh, hearing from you. We love your comments, both about the shows as well as for the suggestions that you have given us. And we're working on, uh, on bringing those to you. You can reach out to uh, uh, Liz and myself at marriagemattershosts at gmail.com. You can also find out some more about us at twinlightscoaching.com. Or you can call us at the number that's on your screen. We look forward to talking with you, to hearing your journey, to giving us your thoughts on the show, on things you'd like to uh, see, as well as whether or not you'd like to actually come and sit here with us and uh, uh, help to bring inspiration to other couples. Have a great day. Steve, thank you so much for being yes, on. Thanks thank for you. so much for having me on. Of course, of course. Bye-bye Have a great now. day. Bye. Bye.